Hi guys, welcome back. Well, I'm in the middle of packing games away and reorganising, so I thought, you know what, I've not done a game collection video in quite some time. So, let's take a look at the Amiga games that I own. So we've got the games, we are reorganising, we're getting everything catalogued. So, I have a big box of games. In fact, it's a 35 litre. It's for, well, the company is actually called the Really Useful Box Company. No shit. <laughs> I have silica gel in them, just in case there's one down there. But anyway, I digress. The Amiga. It's a computer that's quite dear to my heart. What a fantastic system when that first came out. Absolutely blew away the competition. It really did. It was way ahead of its time. Absolutely incredible. But anyway, first game out the box. War in the Gulf. Now, from what I can remember, this is a strategy game. Let's just open it up. See if we can remember what's in it. So, your discs. <laughs> this is when manuals were manuals. Wow. Doesn't smell of anything, so I'm really happy about that because these games, they've been in my loft, loft, that's right, loft, for about three years. Wow. Map. It's obviously helped you. How's this now? Just a poster. And I won't do this with all of them. It is, isn't it? Just a poster. Oh, fantastic. If you haven't guessed already, I think you drive an armoured vehicle. I think it's a tank in this one. It but it has been a hell of a long time since I played this. <laughs> oh, I love it. We all remember what happened in the Gulf with the likes of Saddam Hussein and that. Postcards. What's this last bit? That's just the card. That's just the card. It is just a piece of card. And that's it. Take command of a long awaited team call to the award winning Team Yankee and Pacific Islands. The Iraq Republican Guard have overrun the oil fields of northern Kuwait. War in the Gulf follows the fortunes of a crack unit M1 tanks as the action unfolds. So you can play 25 battle areas individually coded for fine detail. And this was an incredible game. So that's our first one. Second one is a remaster, I suppose, of an incredible game, Elite. Now, box is a little bit beaten up. I've not got round to obviously repairing this one. It was dirt cheap when I picked this up, but I know that's complete. I'm I don't need to show you much more than that with Elite. Absolute incredible game. The next one is an absolute crazy game. Uh, this is, as far as I know, at least it was back then, the only game that went from computer or console to the arcades that had never been done before until Zool, the ninja from the ninth dimension, came along. <laughs> absolutely crazy. Discs, proper discs, 
that's how we loaded these games. What I love about this one is piracy was such a big thing back then. So you've got your code wheel. So when you're loading your game with this one, I'd imagine you'd have to match symbol and then look and it does, it tells you a sequence of numbers. It would tell you then on screen where to look at. Give me say, I don't know, purple number 10 and you punch in the number that's there, in this case 103. It's not perfect, it can be cracked. Again, huge honking manual, but what a game that was. And again, it was the very first game to go from computer to arcades. Thunderhawk, a H73M from Core. Wow. I mean, the graphics are very, very basic from today's standards. I hope you can see that a bit. And if I get a chance, I'll throw up a bit of, um, you know, pictures of this in a bit more detail, if I get a chance. But what a game. 3D. 3D on a computer back there. This was incredible stuff. <laughs> Moving over to a game which is very dear to my heart, and I've only recently packed this one away. Cinema Wears, it came from the desert. This was a game that was made from a film, black and white, the same name. They did do a 90s remake of that film, which I do believe is crap, but it's probably still worth a giggle. And it's filled with all sorts. I've got the discs, I've got blanks, I've got maps. They packed out these boxes back then. But that was the norm. Where today, you know, today's game, PlayStation 4, we'll use that as an example. You're lucky if you get a disc in a box and a reversible cover. That's it. Back then, you had a lot more bang for your buck. Now, a game I can't remember. Fables and Fields, The Legend of, uh, is it Granada? Book One, Westwood Studios. And a majority of all these games are in fantastic condition. Enter the land where magic is real. I remember this. It's a point and click adventure from what I can remember. Um, the graphics were so, they were absolutely fantastic back then. Let's have a quick sneak peek. Oh, I don't want to go through every one of them. <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh my God. It was a nine disc epic. Nine discs. Wow. And again, a big chunky manual. Nine discs. You were there. Insert disc one. Insert disc two. Insert disc four. Back and forth, back and forth, just to get some little bits loaded. Put that there. Right, what's this one? Ah. Sleepwalker. This was a packing game for the actual, uh, for one of the Amigas. Not a hugely great game, but still a fun one to play. It's still a good one to play today. Basically, the boy is walking across the screen and you're the dog. You've got to make sure he doesn't get hurt. So you've got to push platforms down so he doesn't fall into to, uh, holes or whatever, or somebody doesn't hurt him. You've got to take them out and allow him to keep walking. Another one. Oh, Andy, Andy Burns. Me and you played this to death back into the day. Three, oh, five, four, three, two, one, go. The Lombard RAC Rally. It does look crap by today's standards. But this was a brilliant, felt like 3D, felt like simulation in fact. Uh, the way you would hurtle down the rally course, your co-driver would be screaming left to right, but I think, you, yeah, it is. It's a map on his on the notepad. You could see where you're going. You're only looking through a screen this big. Brilliant stuff. Right, one, I've, I'll admit, I've never played. 
it's a, it looks to be strategic, so it's a strategy rugby game. Rugby world class. I don't think I've played it. But the box is absolutely crisp, which is why I've kept it. Now another one that me and the wife did play quite a bit, and that's the law of the temptress. Now I always remember this, it just looked absolutely gorgeous and the graphics look fantastic still today. You know, Virgin Games, Virtual Theatre, you play uh, Dimot. He at the start of the game finds himself imprisoned in a depressing cell. He doesn't know quite yeah, he doesn't know quite why, why where he is or quite why he's there. He can't see even reach the window. It just looks brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I can't remember the majority of that game. I remember playing it, but I couldn't say any more than that. Fantastic game, Bubble Bubble. Do you remember that? Well, those parasol stars. Box, gonna be a little bit on a little bit of indent there. Could do with a little bit of repair work. Apart from that, it's almost a minter. Beautiful condition. Great simple game. A lot of fun. Right, this next one has got an incredible cover. This one is complete because there was a free game that came with it called Apache. I think this box art, and I have been tempted to remove the sticker on it because the sticker sort of does, it lets it down a little bit, but I know that if I remove it, it would make a bigger eye so Alien Breed 2, it don't get much better than that. That is fantastic still, and oh, what a game. They did do a remake of this for, I know definitely the Xbox 360, it got a physical version on that. A remaster, if you like, or retelling is probably the words I'd use. This is still such a fun, fun game to play. I'm going to leave that one to last because I know it's a cracking game. G Lock R360 from Sega. Now, this is effectively almost afterburner. Great fun game still, but I would compare it to Afterburner. Right, another game I know very little about, Fire Force. Looking at the back, it looks to me like it's almost a side-scrolling running gun. The box art, you don't get box art like this anymore. Right, we're down to our last three. Next one is an absolute classic. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> it looks so bad today. <laughs> I was playing this one recently. If you caught my Amiga live stream, I was actually playing this. Full motion video at its absolute best? Maybe not. Uh, but damn, it's difficult. It's a solid game still. It really is. It's held up well in the fighting department. Uh, the actual graphics look absolutely cack. I don't think you've got much more than just, no. The games and a little bit of a manual probably show me all the moves, which really after God knows how many years I should read. Right, second to last, remembers the film, Batman Returns, Michael Keaton. And this does look pretty tasty. I can't remember what it plays like. It has been an absolute age since I played this one. The box though, it's a minter. It's a minter. And the very last one, the box admittedly it's got one blown corner. It does need work. This, if I said Command and Conquer, you all know how those play. Extremely similar. 
better, way better. June 2, the Battle of Arrakis. It's an incredible game and one you should certainly be trying. You're not going to see anything much better than this in that style. And then yeah, discs, probably about four, manual. Blown corner there, as I said, so it does need repair. But a fantastic game. In fact, I was tempted to play this when I did my Amiga gameplay. And that's it for box one. I've got another box and I've got another couple of loose games, two or three loose games that I've kept out of storage at the moment. So expect another one of these videos. I'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me. I'll catch you lot all again. Take care. Woohoo!